This last question comes from our friend Stephen. And Stephen is very passionate about this point, and I disagree with this point. But just because I disagree with you doesn't mean I don't respect you. So lots of respect. Thank you for the question, Stephen. And uh, I'm going to preface this by saying, yeah, I disagree, but I'm going to read it and explain why. Stephen says, UFC needs to add a rule that being judo ipun, that's basically being thrown, it's how you, you win in judo. You throw your opponent to the ground uh, with a clean throw on their back, right? Being judo ipun is an immediate loss via TKO, regardless of if you can continue to fight. You can't survive an ipun on cement. In the Askren versus Lawler fight, within like 20 seconds, Lawler drops Askren on his head, which would have killed him in a street fight. But all it did was make him fuzzy, which allowed Lawler to just go to town on his head for way too long. We saw Andrades drop Namajunas on her head and knock her out. And that is even with the G-max of the canvas being so much higher than concrete. Anyway, I've been making this argument all over the place on MMA videos, but no one has said anything yet. Well, I'll say a few things about it for you. The UFC is supposed to be the ultimate fighting championship, yet slamming a dude onto his head, neck, back doesn't count for an immediate victory. When it's a death sentence on the sidewalk, come on, that's an expletive I'm not going to read. In almost every UFC fight I've ever seen, there's a point where one fighter throws the other in a way that would break the other guy had they been fighting on a harder surface. Yet, the guy just rolls into guard. That's not right. We shouldn't allow that. We should add a rule set to make up for the artificial environment. The... Hold on. This is a long question. The strongest, hardest heavyweight hitter doesn't even come close to the kinetic energy transfer that happens to your body when you're judo thrown onto the ground. The only reason it isn't that bad in the octagon is because of the uncommonly high G-max on the floor. Yes, I'm a salty judoka, mad that my style isn't as well represented in MMA as it should be. Okay, well, thank you for making your point, and I understand where you're coming from. If it is a street fight out on a street fighting on concrete, yeah, throwing somebody on their head is probably going to kill them. Throwing someone, even if they break fall perfectly onto their back onto concrete, is going to hurt them a lot more than it would throwing them on a mat. That's why we use mats at a gym. That's why we use mats in combat sports. Man, even in boxing, do you know why there is a mat in boxing? Do you know why there is a, I, I don't know what the official uh, measurement, but it's, it's several centimeters of, of foam that need to be on the mat. Why? They're not grappling, they're not throwing each other. Well, for the simple reason that when a boxer gets knocked out and they fall, when the head hits the ground, it's going to hit the mat instead of hit, say, solid wood or concrete or something like that, which would cause far greater damage. See, in street fights, if we watch those, it's not the knockout that does all the damage, it's falling on the concrete. That can kill you. The idea of killing somebody with one punch, it's very romanticized, and I'm not saying it can't happen, but it's the rare, rare exception, not the norm. But what does kill people is falling headfirst onto concrete. Yeah. Okay. That being said, I think that is a terrible idea for the sport of mixed martial arts because it would make it really... How can I put this? Really dumb to watch. <laughs> if you would lose immediately after being thrown or taken down or slammed in any way, shape, or form, fights would suddenly change to everybody trying to get that one big takedown. As I said before, it takes an average of two minutes to get the first takedown in a fight. And generally speaking, that first takedown doesn't finish the fight. This is why the round system under unified rules, the five-minute round system, favors the strikers in a huge way. A huge way. Judo is underrepresented in mixed martial arts. I mean, is it, though? There are a ton 
of successful judo black belts in the UFC right now. And the UFC has a storied history of successful judo black belts who have fought. Now, how many of them ended up becoming world champion? I mean, there's Ronda Rousey. She became world champion. But a lot of them were top contenders like Dong Hyum Kim, Caro Parisian, Anderson Silva as a judo black belt. I mean, we I don't think I've ever seen him do a judo throw, but, you know, he was just better with his striking. Way better with his counter striking. So, if we were to say that every variable in the UFC needs to be reflective of a street fight on concrete, then we have to change a whole lot more than how we're going to rule a throw. Like, a whole lot more, man. If we're grappling on concrete at all, shirtless, on concrete, you're going to get cut up. You're going to use vastly different techniques than you would on a mat. But if you're on the street, you're probably not wearing Valetudo shorts and shirtless, you know, with Vaseline on your face to prevent cuts. So let's just get rid of that, too. Let's have the fighters fight in regular, average street clothes, you know, t-shirts and jeans and shoes. Shouldn't we? Let's have them fight without mouth guards, without cups, without referees. Why don't we just have them fight on the street so it resembles a street fight even more? Or you could just watch street fights. There are millions of those here on the internet. Look them up. They're terrible. They're absolutely terrible garbage fights, man. Terrible technique. Terrible outcomes, terrible people involved. I'm going to tell you something. I love the sport of mixed martial arts. There are some rules I would like to see changed or done away with. For example, the 12 to 6 elbow rule. That one needs to go. It's just dumb. But adding additional rules, I'm not a big fan of that. I want less rules in mixed martial arts. I want fewer rules, not more. As it stands, fights take pl place in a fight cage, and that fight cage has a mat. So if you can survive being thrown on the mat, cool, keep fighting. If you can't, if that knocks you out, and that does happen a lot, one of the most common causes of knockouts, especially in amateur MMA, is a slam from guard. A guy pulls up guard, the other fighter lifts him up, boom, slams him. In amateur MMA, that's an extremely common cause of knockout. So yeah, you can totally knock somebody out by slamming them. Or even doing a correct judo throw. I mean, man, look at Ronda Rousey versus... Oh, what's her name? Uh, she was touted as the first judo, uh, um, Brazilian jiu-jitsu black belt that Ronda Rousey fought. Blanking on her name, but um, what did Ronda do? They tied up, Ronda did a hare goshi. Boom, as soon as they hit the, the ground, what's her face? The opponent was out, and Ronda, you know, landed some strikes from the, uh, the scarf hold position, and then the referee called it off. But she was out after that throw. So, you know, even on a, an inch or two of foam, yeah, those judo throws done correctly can still be extremely destructive. So less rules, not more, my friend. We want fewer rules in MMA, not more. So when should a fight end? Well, very simple. When either A, a fighter is knocked out, B, when a fighter gives up, when they submit, or C, when the referee decides this fighter is no longer intelligently defending themselves, so I'm going to save their life and step in. Anything else than that? No. Otherwise... We are opening up that door to turning MMA into point karate. Where we get really close to touching, well, I would have hit you. It would have been a knockout. See, I got really close. That's not the sport we want to watch, man. Sorry to say, I respect your opinion, but I think it's a dumb idea. Thanks for your question. 
Now get out there and train.